Hi everybody and welcome to video 6 in our Grunger Art Series. Now this is a challenge that we are participating in. There's five um, Facebook groups and um, we're having a drawing. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble talking. It could be because it's 1.30 in the morning. Um, anyway, the five uh, Facebook groups that are collabor nah, not collaborating but participating in the challenge is uh, of course Line.Arrow and that's going to be Line.Arrow Junk Journal Group and Haystacks Crafty Corner, Two Sisters Jam, Sweet Pea Papers, Junk Journal Tutorials and more. Now um, the best part about this challenge is A, you get freebies every week from the Line.Arrow uh, Junk Journal Group and then you uh, make stuff and every week when you make stuff either the challenge or whatever you want out of the freebies and or the papers. There's five kits and we'll go over that in just one second. Um, then you can get an entry into the drawing. So all you have to do is post your picture of your project and use the hashtag GrungerArt and then um, you're in the challenge drawings. Now there's a drawing for each group so there's three prizes in each drawing so that gives you a chance to win one of 15 prizes. Now you can win once in each group so that means you could actually win five prizes. You never know. It depends on how many people enter. So you better enter. You never know. <laughs> okay so you've got your freebies every week and then also every week um, Natalie at line.arrow on uh, YouTube will um, do a video showing you the challenge and um, the basics of how it it's uh, put together then um, you can do whatever you want if you use just the freebies that's cool you don't have to buy anything to participate in the challenge then um, you get one entry per post if you just use the freebies and be sure to tell us in your post what you've used and then use the hashtag grunger art in your post and if you use the um, freebies and the papers let us know that and you get two entries per post and if you use just the papers from the kits that's fine too and then you get two entries per post for that as well okay um, the kits that I'm going to be working from oh there's three weeks to the challenge and then the fourth week is a week for you to catch up and finish your projects and such and then the drawing is going to be February 4th for uh, the prizes okay um, the kits that we're going to be using or that I'm using is the grunge background papers now there's two of them labeled that and uh, one is really the backing papers and one's background papers so um, they're both um, sets that you can use to back your pages or as I got glue all over me I'm sorry um, or to um, put as backgrounds okay so we got the grunge background papers and there's 30 pages in this kit there's 10 black and white 10 sepia and 10 color of these pages the grunge collage pages which uh, there's 22 of those and they're all in uh, color but I printed them out in black and white here's the second grunge background papers they're different pages and there's 10 of these in black and white 10 in sepia and 10 in color so that's 30 pages the grunge junk journal kit which is 22 pages and we'll talk about why that didn't print out uh, correctly in just a second and then there's the grunge ephemera pack yep the grunge ephemera pack these two are in color as well and I printed them out in black and white and it works out to somewhere around 90 something pages or a hundred I'm not sure plus the freebies every week and the freebies come out in black and white sepia and color so you can choose uh, what you're gonna do with your freebie papers so altogether it's something like 120 pages for you to work with okay now um, the reason that these didn't print out correctly and just have this little border all the way around which you would think would be the right way to go let me show you on this one it says 2024 edit instead of addition 
and that's because uh, Natalie lives in the Netherlands, so she has A5 size paper, and if you're in the U.S., you have 8.5 by 11 papers, and those are not the same. So you're going to end up, if you um, just print it out normal um, or without changing any of the settings, you're going to cut off part of your image all the way around. Okay, so you, what you want to do is you want to turn off your fit to page setting, which is usually the default. And then you also, if you were thinking about printing uh, borderless, don't do that either because you'll cut off part of your pictures. Okay, all right. Let me paper clip all this information back together. Okay. All right. So now when we left off in video five, we were in the back here and we had done this page. We had also done page five, I believe, which was the double pockets. Okay. And I don't know why I keep saying okay. 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 <laughs> We had done this uh, specimen window on this page, and since we didn't put any magnets in, I ended up putting two Velcro dots instead of one because um, one would have been right in the center here, and that's not really where I wanted to put a, a Velcro dot. Um, that is the fuzzy side. Okay. I keep thinking it's the clear side, but the clear sides are over here. Right, there's one there. I couldn't figure out where it was. And then um, I put the white sides over here. I still may put some ephemera down here or a stamp. I'm not really sure. Um, it does look kind of empty. On the front, I put this little uh, piece of ephemera and then this lady's little face comes out. Okay, and then um, I said okay again. So today we're going to do 7, 8, and 9, or 7 and 8, and then we'll do 9 and the closure and start on the base for the next section, or not really the base. Um, I think we might do an envelope stack for section 3, and I'm not sure what I want to do for section 2, so we're probably going to skip to section 3. So right now for page 7, we're going to do an invisible belly band with an envelope attached. Now you're thinking when you open the envelope you're going to see the inside of the flap. You're right. So we're going to do something to fix that. Okay, so this is page 7. Put that out of the way. This is our paper, so let's cut that. We're going to use the side with the kind of coffee stain looking uh, piece or image. So we're going to, the height is going to be correct. So all we have to do is cut the width. We're, okay, it's right about there. Let's get this correct. There's a little teeny bit of white where I didn't cut it quite correctly, but that's okay because we're going to ink it in black. And we're going to make it this wide. Mm. And make it that wide. I almost didn't make it wide enough because I can see that little corner of that other page. It must be a little crooked. And I thought that was the edge. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to be able to see this without it kind of being under the envelope at all times. So I'm going to turn it around this way. So I'm going to label this the top. Okay, so let's ink this in black. Come on. Grunge our art. <laughs> okay. 
like I said, not going to see that little teeny bit of white. Okay. So now we've got the paper. And we're not going to glue the paper on. I mean, we're not going to put the acetate belly band on yet going to look like a uh, floating envelope. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know why I keep saying okay. It's just an accident, okay? <laughs> so we're going to take this envelope. Here's our belly band. Let's go ahead and measure it. Why not? We'll measure it and cut it. And it's going to be on the left side. When we're done. Stand up, go to the trimmer, sit down. Stand up, go to the trimmer, sit down. <laughs> Story of my life while I'm recording. Okay, so now we're going to work on the envelope. I've already inked it. Now you'll notice that I have inked it quite a bit in here. And that's because we're going to um, paper this part so that when we see it through here, it will be uh, paper. Duh. Okay, we're gonna put a magnet here. Let's do that now. Oops. So many magnets in here. The thing I stuck it to moved. <laughs> okay. I got some new ones. And they come in a pack of 100 and I had about 15 left, so I have quite a few magnets in there. Can't believe on the other ones I forgot and had to use Velcro dots. It's fine. Can't go by the word the or the name the magnet queen if I keep forgetting the magnets though. That's for sure. Oh, we don't want to put the magnet on yet. Does anybody know why? because we're going to run it through the big shot. Last time I did that, it broke the magnet into little bitty pieces. Okay, so let's paper the front. Now it's going to be on the left. So this is going to be the top. This is going to be the top. We're going to paper the back to cover this part right here. Um, it's not really big enough. The opening isn't really big enough to use as a pocket when we flip it open. There's not enough room really to get things in and out. So I guess we could cut this off and then trim this down to here. But why not just paper it and put a pocket or something on it? So let's paper the front so we can cut our window. We're going to put a round window, maybe two. We might put two windows in it. So, we're going to put this envelope on the back. So, let's put this on the front. So, we're going to cut it here. We're going to cut it there. Okay, we're going to cut this part first and then this part, otherwise we cut all the way across, which would give us the height for the back, wouldn't it? 
and then all we would have to do is cut the width. We're going to be using the whole paper. Normally we wouldn't do it that way, but since we're using one half for the front and one half for the back, then we might as well um, cut the height for the whole thing. What a cool belly band that's going to be at some point in its life. Sorry, I had to pick up a piece of acetate off the floor so Oz didn't get it. Okay, now we're going to cut the width. And we'll probably put a tuck on the back so that we can see the envelope. Let's make sure about the size. this puppy up. I almost tried to do it in the lid. With black soot you probably could. It gets everywhere. Now this is directional. We're going to cut windows in it, but um, yeah. So let's open this up. These particular envelopes that I get from Amazon open fairly well without giving you a lot of trouble. Um, I hope I don't say that and curse myself. But the reason we're going to open it up is because we don't want to have to slide the die in and not see where they're going to be. So let's open these little flaps. Let's glue the paper on. Why don't we do that? We almost had to stamp the front, but that would have been like the one on the front of the whole get-go. That was stenciled. I guess we could have stamped it. We still can. Goodness. This is why I keep everything out of the way. Put it back where it goes. I know you guys think I'm nutty. <laughs> I probably am. In fact, I know I am. Alright, so we're going to put the front on so that when we cut the circles, we don't have to turn around and then cut the paper. We've got it already pre-cut. Okay, let's... um. We have to put them on from the back with the blades forward. See what we can do here. And I'm just taking the ugliest washi that I have. 
taping it down. That's because these I definitely don't want to move. Um, you guys know I'm not a big fan of using washi on dye because it gets squished so flat it's hard to get off. But um, that's going to be awful close to glue. Let's move it over just a little bit. Oh, I was going to tell you guys it's windy out. So if you see what looks like flickering lights, it's not your imagination. My lights flicker and sometimes go out. The power sometimes goes out when it's windy. So um, let's just uh, pretend like if it gets the lights go out all of a sudden and you don't see me anymore and then the video starts up again in the middle of a sentence, then you'll know what happened. My power went out. <laughs> Let me get the big shot. And as usual, we'll do that off screen. Um, you'll be able to hear it, but you won't be able to see it because I can't do it on the glass surface, as you know. Plus, this isn't a big shot tutorial. Oh, I didn't set aside any paper to go inside. I guess if I do it that way, it doesn't matter, huh? It gets stuck. Now we have these cool little cards that we can use. There's a little bit of glue from the edge of the, where I glued the paper. So we've got that one. Even better yet, we have that one. Let's put these back in there envelopes so they don't get lost. This is a, I use CD covers uh, because then I can see what's inside. But, um, but it holds them really well. Depends on the size, but it'll hold up to a, a five inch circle in there. Very cool. Okay, let's ink them up. I think what we'll use is one of the plain papers, or not the plain, but the backing papers, not the um, collage pages for the inside. So, let's just use this. Then we'll have to pick out a card from the collage page. You know, I'll make a card from the collage page. You guys know how to make cards, so we don't do that on screen or on camera, on something, <laughs> on Dasher.
Okay, now we're going to need a piece of acetate that covers the whole back. Whoops. And I happen to have one. And with my scraps. So let's measure this. And the reason we want to do that instead of two smaller ones is because we don't want things to catch going in and out. Wow, that's almost the exact right height. for the width. Let's go here. Let's take our two really cool cards and put them in the ephemera box with the other cool cards that we've made. I go through acetate like nobody's business. It's a good thing you can buy it a hundred pieces at a time. All it is is overhead projector film. And it makes it a little bit sturdier, a little bit heavier than um, if you were to, to buy the 0.5 uh, mill millimeter uh, acetate. That's real flimsy, like what was in the uh, CD cover or in your regular um, envelopes. This way just a little bit. Oh no, this way was fine. We're gonna trim this edge off for the pocket. Very cool. You know what we could do instead of putting paper in here? We could stencil inside here. Let's do that instead. stamps out of the way. Could do a pattern. Make our life easier too, wouldn't it? put the um, papers we were using in the um, pile of uh, backing papers and such. hurt the rotator cuff on my left shoulder when I push down to hold these stencils while I'm pushing and rubbing this way. Wow. Yowza. Okay, that's going to be in the center. Let's put something interesting on this side. Which would be maybe this. Hmm. 
and put this behind the window instead of just these holes that are in the center or the circles or whatever. The little and do it this way. And if we don't like it, what will we do? Just a little paper over it. I like it. I like it. Okay. So let's um, glue it back together. Just glue it where the glue was before. Try not to glue it to the washi. <laughs> okay, now we're going to paper the back with this. is the right height because of the way we cut the paper. Let's get it the right width. I like it. bowling scorecard. I used to bowl. Very, very bad at it. My average is 75. <laughs> which means I've bowled as high as about 120 and I've bowled as low as a 45, which I remember distinctly bowling the 45. Literally in the bowling league when I was the manager of a Pearl Vision, which is an eyeglass retailer place. I don't know if you guys know those. They're like lens crafters. They make your glasses right there, you know, in the shop. And um, anyway, as a manager, I decided to sponsor a bowling team in the bowling league, which involved the store paying the fee, buying three t-shirts, and that was it. And then we got the free advertising from having the names on the shirts. Anyway, there was me and two other people on my team. The other two people, um, the husband's average was, I believe, 250, and the wife's average was 200, and my average was 75 or 74, 78, whatever it was. It was pitiful. Whoopsie, magnet. And um, the uh, we won because of my average. It gave this gave us a really good um, handicap, I guess, like in golf. Okay, we marked where the top was, and I put a big circle with an M in it, and I still almost forgot to put the magnet in. Now, so that we don't see the flap as just the flap, because we can't really ink over the sticky, we're going to paper over it instead. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to put some glue on it. I'm going to be able to move it around a little bit, so I want to cover this sticky pretty well. 
with glue, otherwise it just glues, sticks instantly, just like your regular envelope sticky wood. Okay, then we're going to take this right where it left off. I'm going to put it on here. There's a little pencil mark here. Erase that. Let the glue dry for just a second. And we are going to have to glue this to the acetate or glue the acetate to this, but um, which is the much easier way to do it. But it doesn't matter, you know, because it's see through. So let's turn this over. The scissors out. Hmm. See, it doesn't quite line up there, does it? That's all right, it's inked. We'll pretend like nobody's going to see the boo-boo, which, if I trim it right, they won't. don't think anyone's going to look that close. I mean, they might, I guess, see that this is covered and this is inked. And we'll cut this little piece off of here and then we'll have another good scrap. I have to start using some of our scraps. We'll definitely use them up on the envelopes. I'm going to see how many I think I can fit in there by um, seeing the thickness of this side. Okay, so now we're going to take the acetate, put the envelope in the center, right about here. Mm -hmm. So let's put glue on here. Acetate on. It's kind of hard to see where it's at. Make sure that folds over. Mm, it's closer to the top. Oh, well, we can't slide it really, can we? going to glue this on as a belly band. Oh, no we're not. We're going to trim this first. Very bright idea. Okay. 
and glue one of my hairs in there. I think this turned out pretty cool. Okay, so the only thing we have left to do now, look at that, we'll have our card in here, we'll make it, maybe we'll make it out of this piece, see if we can get that butterfly to show in that top window, which I think we can, that'll be cool, okay, um, it's to put a piece of acetate on the back up here so that we have a tuck. I don't know why this piece is in here. It's got glue on it, but I can trim it. I can trim it! Wow, it looks like we're only going to get this one page done. I think I went too slow. I guess that would be the good assumption, wouldn't it? Okay, we'll glue this on three sides. Or should we just glue it on the top? No, we'll glue it on three sides. I can still hear the wind. You know, I saw on my ALEXA, I have it set up where it shows me the weather alerts as well as just, you know, the stupid ads and stuff. But, um, that there was a wind advisory and I thought it was from 4 to 10 last night and um, I was like well it's not windy at all I don't know what they're talking about well they were talking about 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. okay so let's um about two tags I can hear my wind chimes going and they're around the back <laughs> my bedroom's at one end of my apartment and the sliding door with the wind chimes is at the other end of the apartment my apartment's basically a square. No, a rectangle. Anyway, my bedroom's at this end, and those sliding doors straight down the other end. If I walk out the bedroom door and walk straight, I'll walk right into the sliding glass door. And right outside there is where all my wind chimes are hung. The reason I'm going ahead and doing these is because we don't really have enough time to... So we'll do the other two pages. can't believe I only got one page done. Um, we'll do the other two pages and um, we'll get that done. I guess it's because I messed around with the two windows. But I still think that turned out pretty cool, don't you? 
Looks like it just goes straight across. Mm -hmm. there. And put this here like so. And then you get a writing area over here. Put it in the book and I'll make a card for it. And put it over here. Paper clips everywhere. Everywhere, I tell you. It turned out nice, though. I wish it hadn't taken us the whole video. You notice how I always say us? I'm just assuming that you're, you know, hanging out with me, taking up time like I take up time. <laughs> We can make up time. Oh, that looks nice. That looks nice with the other one. What do you guys think? I think they look cool together. I wish this had been black and white, or black. If I'd have thought about it, I would have sprayed it black you know, ahead of time, but I didn't. Now it's in there. Okay, so we're going to have a card in here with a tab, and then that'll open. You'll have these two little tags. Maybe I should go ahead and put it up in there. We'll have the two tags in here, and then that you can write in the back of. Then you can write on the envelope if you wanted to, I guess. And then you're going to have this large writing area. I'll put some ephemera up in here, maybe. Okay? Okay. Well, that's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next video. And that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay? All right. Well, thanks you for uh, showing up and hanging around with me. Bye-bye.